All right, thank you for joining me. We are here with our foot video lesson 2.06, The Russia of the Romanovs. And this goes with your Human Odyssey reading book, this book, pages 417 to 429, and then goes with your student guide, this one, pages 272 to 283. And we'll begin on page 275 of your student guide. So beginning on 275 of this book here. All right, so lesson introduction, The Russia of the Romanovs. Russia, the largest country in the world, developed its own unique culture over centuries. But events in Western Europe were transforming the world. Could Russia really ignore the Renaissance and Reformation? Would Russia let the age of exploration pass her by? Two great rulers, Peter and Catherine, tried to pull Russia into the modern age, but did they succeed? Learning obje objectives for this lesson. Uh, many of these objectives are covered in detail in the readings from our Human Odyssey book, pages 417 to 429. So do make sure that you are doing your readings. Uh, you'll get a lot more information that goes with these student guide pages, okay? So describe the social and political structure of Latin American colonies in the 1800s. Explain why attempts to establish republics in Latin America were less successful than in the United States. Identify major uh, physical and political and cultural features of Latin America. Identify significant leaders of the 19th century and Latin American independence movements and their accomplishments and failings. So this is where you need to open up your student guide, page 275, uh, and this will start on question number one. Okay, so this goes with questions one, two, and three. And um, as I say always, if you need more time to fill this in when you're watching this on your own, not during class time, please feel free to pause the video. You can um, fill in the answers from there or the slides are all posted in the OMS. So the Renaissance, the Reformation, and the Age of Exploration had changed the Western world by the 17th century, but it barely touched Russia. What practice or institution most differentiated Russia from the West? It was serfdom. Serfs were peasants who were bound by law to the land on which they worked. This is questions four through seven, Peter the Great. Peter the Great, a Russian czar assumed the throne in 1689. His family name was Romanov. Peter was a great reformer. In 1696, he set off on an 18-month tour of Western Europe, the first Russian ruler to venture abroad during times of peace, meaning that not during wartime. Peter reformed the government and the church. He promoted on the basis of merit, not birth. He insisted on Western dress. He built roads, canals, and factories and he modernized the army. Perhaps Peter's greatest achievement was the construction of the port on the Baltic Sea called St. Petersburg. His greatest failing was to leave unreformed the institution of serfdom, meaning he was not able to abolish or get rid of serfdom. Questions eight through 10, Catherine the Great. In 1762, a German born princess named Empress Catherine came to the throne she promoted enlightenment or liberal ideas and fostered the arts. Catherine also modernized Russia. She encouraged industry and trade with her European neighbors. She built roads. She improved education, especially for girls. She proposed a new code of laws. In the end, however, Catherine did little to improve the lot of the vast majority of her subjects, the serfs. Questions 11 through and 12, Russian serfs. Russian serfs lived in single room cabins made of logs or clay. They did not own the land upon which they toiled and possessed few rights under the law. There were no real opportunities to leave serfdom, but some serfs were able to escape the hardships of their life. They could join the army, work in a factory, or work on one of the country's great construction projects. Questions 13 through 15. In 1801, Catherine the Great's grandson ascended the throne as Alexander I. She had always referred to her beloved grandson as Monsieur Alexander. Alexander I, the new czar, was liked by many Russians when he assumed power in part because he lifted a ban on foreign books, reopened private publishing houses, freed political prisoners, lifted a ban on foreign travel, and improved the education system. War with France halted Alexander's plan to reform Russia. Question 16 and 17, defeated. In the year 1812, the Russians defeated the French Emperor Napoleon. 
and forced his army to retreat from the city of Moscow. After Alexander died, revolutionaries launched a failed attempt to overthrow the Russian government. Their rebellion was known as the Decemberist Uprising. This is page 272, Explore and Discuss, Catherine the Great. This is an optional assignment, but it is recommended. It will help to kind of tie together everything that you need to know for this lesson. So Catherine the Great, um, her reign was characterized, meaning her reign, meaning her, her time that she spent um, ruling, was characterized by good intentions that were rarely fulfilled. On page 425 of your Human Odyssey textbook, you can see some of her good intentions in the seven passages from Catherine's instruction which she wrote to guide officials as they drafted a new law code. And if you look on page 277 in your student guide, that's this one, you'll find them, um, you can fill in these answers. So number one, natural liberty, supreme good. Number two, the safety of every citizen, the equality of citizens. Number three, liberty. Number four, nature and reason. Number five, equals. Number six, innocent. And number seven, house and family. So why, despite the efforts of these accomplished leaders, did serfdom prove so difficult to eliminate? Russia's resistance to change, the need for Russian monarchs to keep the support of the boyars, uh, who would not tolerate the abolition of serfdom, meaning the, to get rid of serfdom, the economy's dependence on serfdom, the fear of change or events elsewhere in Europe also contributed to the difficulty to abolish or eliminate serfdom. And remember, serfdom was like, um, like slavery. So again, that's optional, but definitely recommended. So there are several other optional pages within this lesson. Lesson, You're not required to do them, but again, they are recommended. So this one is Water, Water Everywhere. This is another mapping um, assignment that's in your student guide. This is pages 278 and 279. So again, as you're watching this on your own, you can pause this video to fill in the answers, uh, or you can look at the slides on the OMS. So this one, what's so great about the Romanovs? Again, this one is optional, but we are gonna talk about this one during this flip video because I do think it's important. So this is on pages 281 to 283. You can just listen or you can fill in. So this is a, a basically an interview format. So Peter the Great says, uh, Czar Peter, how did your country differ from the rest of Europe and Americas when you became Czar? And Peter says, Russia did not enjoy many of the benefits that had resulted from the scientific revolution, the age of exploration, the Renaissance or the Reformation. Our country looked to the past much more than to the future. The attitude in Russia was, if it is old, it must be good. If it is new, it must be bad. The interviewer viewer says, why did you feel you had to travel to Western Europe in 1697? Peter said, I needed to travel there myself to find out how other more modern European countries did things. I realized that people there had skills and crafts that we Russians do not possess. For Russia to grow, expand, and modernize, we needed to adopt Western ways. So an interviewer says, you have never been bashful about your greatest achievements. What were they? Peter says, single-handedly, I dragged Russia into the modern era by the force of many energies and my daring ambition. I made Russians work hard to bring about change, but no one worked harder to make this happen than I did myself. I'm proud of the way I expanded this country's borders and reorganized uh, its government and church. But if I had to pick one single achievement, I would have to say it was the construction of the great city of St. Petersburg. And the interviewer says, if, and if I may be so bold, your majesty, how about your greatest failure? Peter would say, I regret to say that my greatest failure was in not easing the burden of serfdom. That institution more than anything else tied Russia to its ignorant past. So again, this wasn't a real interview. This was just what an interviewer would question and what Peter the Great may have said. So now we move on to Catherine the Great, same, same setup. Interviewer, Empress, history remembers you as Catherine the Great, one of Russia's most outstanding rulers. In what ways did you modernize Russia? Catherine says, I introduced new ideas, particularly the ideas of the Enlightenment, that I was becoming so popular in France. I tried to attract the leading thinkers of the day to Russia and did my best to promote the arts. I also proposed a new code of laws and modernized the country's industry, trade, and roads. The interviewer asks, Your Majesty, you were a monarch who highly valued education. Why did you think education was so important for the Russians? And Catherine would say, As a single person, there was only so much I could do to change Russia. I did what I could. But to transform the country, more people needed to be educated, taught new and better ways of doing things, conducting themselves in organizing society. This might seem like a slow way to bring about change, 
but in the long run, I think it is the best way. The interviewer would ask, you like to be thought of as a new kind of Russian monarch, one inspired by the new ideas of European enlightenment. Why was it so difficult to make enlightenment ideas work in Russia? And Catherine would say, that brings us back to education and the ignorance of the majority of Russian people. Most Russian peasants knew little or nothing about the world beyond their farm or village. They did things as their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents had always done them. They believed that old ways were the best ways. The new ideas of the Enlightenment meant little to such people. And the interviewer would ask, why were you unable to end serfdom? Catherine might respond, again, because Rus Russians resist change. Even an empress, regardless of how powerful she seems, can do little to change such an old institution. To be honest, though, I was in a difficult situation. I needed the support of the nobles to stay in power, and the nobles would not tolerate any moves to end serfdom. You could say, despite my best intentions, my hands were tied. So again, not exactly what she said, but what perhaps she would have said from everything we have studied from her. And this is Alexander I, the last person we're going to interview. Your Majesty, you were the grandson of Catherine the Great. What can you tell me about your childhood and your early education? Alexander would say, Grandmother did everything she could to make sure I had a good upbringing and the best education. Education, as you may already know, was one of her top priorities. She made sure I had the best of tutors. And the interviewer might say, Monsieur Alexander, unlike some early leaders, you never were known as the great. But what do you consider your greatest achievement? Alexander might say, my greatest achievement is one that I shared with the people of Russia. In the great patriotic war against the French invaders, we defeated that awful Napoleon Bonaparte. The day I rode into Paris with the great liberating armies of Europe was the proudest day of my reign, the interviewer would ask. In later years, you changed your opinion about some of the new thinking that came out of France. Why did you change your mind? <clears throat> Alexander, some of the th ideas sounded fine in theory, but when they were put into practice, they were disastrous. Just look at what happened during the French Revolution. The church was persecuted, nobles fled the country, and the king and queen were executed. And then Napoleon came into power and unleashed war across all of Europe. No, the new thinking that came out of France was just too dangerous. The interviewer, your majesty, why were you unable to improve the lives of the majority of your subjects, the serfs? Alexander might say, like my grandmother and others, I tried to make some changes, but when you are the czar, things are never as simple as they seem. There was so much resistance to change, and to tell you the truth, I did get cold feet after I saw what happened in France, all the talk about liberty, equality, and fraternity. You just don't know where it's all going to stop. And so again, those are some examples of interviews that might have happened. Um, and so this again is another optional activity uh, in your student guide. There's a lot of them for this unit. Um, you can talk about whether um, th this would be something that a czar would say, serfs, boyars, um, patriarch of Moscow, peasants, um, or a, a liberal thinker. So you can do that on your own. You can pause this video if needed and you can fill that in. We're not going to do that during this flip video. All right. And so then we come to the end. A fun fact about the movie Anastasia. The movie Anastasia is actually based on Anna Anderson. A lot of people think it was based on Anastasia of Romanov, um, but it was actually based on Anna Anderson, who was the most infamous Anastasia imposter. DNA evidence which proved that Anastasia's body was buried alongside the rest of her family. So if you're interested in this kind of uh, history, you can always look up the Romanovs and you can find a lot more information about the Romanovs and their family. Thanks so much for joining me.